All right, guys, so we are down to our third and final franchise mode themed video revolving around the top three potential picks in this year's NHL draft. We've done our test with the Buffalo Sabres getting Rasmus Stalin. That failed. We did our test with Andre Svechnikov in the Carolina Hurricanes. That one also failed. So the Montreal Canadiens, who stand in at number three, have the last opportunity to make the playoffs here with their potential pick, hopefully, being Philip Zadina. All right, Habs fans, this one is for you. Let's see if we can take the Montreal Canadiens to the playoffs here in year number two of a franchise mode with Philip Zadina on the team. Hey guys, what's going on today? Bo Joe here, and welcome back to our third and final franchise mode theme test video revolving around the top three picks in the NHL draft and Montreal is going to be that last team. So if you guys have missed the previous two where we did our tests with Buffalo and Rasmus Dahlin and Andrei Svechnikov and the Carolina Hurricanes, links are down below. Make sure to go check them out. Also make sure to hit that sub button if you guys haven't already, the notification button, the like button, and also make sure to guys go check it out into the AM clothing. I know you guys see that little ad pop up on my videos from time to time, but definitely make sure you go check it out. Use code BOJO, you get yourselves a 10% off deal. Definitely check the website out on Wednesdays because they have some pretty damn good deals going on Wednesdays where they have to sell like $20 hoodies or something like that. So you guys can get something pretty nice like that. I don't really wear it out all too often, but in the summertime when the air conditioner kicks on, it's a really nice, comfortable hoodie to wear for sure. So, uh, do me a favor, go check out that link down below. It's in the description, all the way down at the bottom. All right, enough of plugging my own stuff. Here we are with the Montreal Canadiens in year number two in franchise mode. If you guys are not aware of what we do with these test videos, we take control of a team. We simulated year number one with the team. I made the trade for the top pick in the NHL draft so that I could pick the player I want, obviously, with the uh, Montreal Canadiens having the third overall pick. and. Odds are they're probably going to take Philip Zanina or Andre Svechnikov, dependent upon what the Carolina Hurricanes do. So odds are leaning towards Zadina going to the Montreal Canadiens. So we're going to test it out and see if he can help this team make it to the playoffs. Okay, so let me show you guys some of the upgrades that the team has gotten through year number one. They did not make the playoffs in year number one. They were a flat 500 team. I think they went... 37, 37, and 8, so pretty much 500 on the dot. And the team got a couple really good upgrades, and honestly, I have, out of all the three teams that we've done so far, I have a weird feeling that this team is going to be the one to do it, but we'll have to see. So Max Pacioretty sitting at 87, Jonathan Drouin up to an 86, so I think he grew like three overall points, which is really nice. And then we have Philippe Zadina right here, the 77 overall, right wing, two way forward, 18 years old, medium elite. So I did the exact same thing with Zadina that I did with Svechnikov in the last video and what I did with Dolan. All of his stats are raised by one overall. Every single individual stat put up by one overall and that was it. So I did that just to make him a little bit more NHL ready than what he already is coming out of the draft. I think coming out of the draft he's normally like a 76 so he would normally go down to the minors. But in this case that one overall boosts actually boosts him up to a fourth line forward so he is usable. And that's what we're going to run with. Same thing with the Svechnikov video as well. We're going to put him onto the first line. And honestly, that's a really good first line. It's the best first line I think we've worked with. Moving on to the second line, we have Arturi Lekkinen went up to an 82. Galchenyuk's up to an 84. Gallagher still stayed at an 83. Line number three, we have Kirby Reichel. So he got a nice little boost. He's up to a 79. Charles Houdon, 81. And then Andrew Shaw up to an 80. Fourth line, Paul Byron, 78. Philippe Deneau, 80 and Aleshemsky, 78. Onto the defensive pairs, we have Jeff Petrie at an 82, Shea Weber at an 89, Carl Olsner at an 81, David Schlemko at an 80, and then Jamie Benn at a 79, and then Noah Juleson out of nowhere. I thought Victor Mete would have actually gotten a decent little overall boost, but unfortunately, he kind of stayed relatively at like a 76, 78, but Noah Juleson actually got a very, very big overall boost. I think he went from either a 74 or a 76 to an 80, so you know what? I have a feeling he might actually push uh, for a chance to make the lineup next year with the Canadians anyway. So Noah Juleson will be on that uh, third line defensive pair with Jordy Ben. And then obviously the piece de resistance of this team in net 
Carey Price and Charlie Lindgren will be backing him up. Carey Price actually went up two overall points. He was a 91 in year number one. It's up to a 93 overall now. I don't know, what what is with the goaltenders like raising overall points like out of nowhere in franchise mode? I mean, it's nothing like the Cam Ward overall boost we got in the last episode, but still two overall boosts from Carey Price. I'm not sure if that's warranted or not. Once again, there's his stats from... Uh, year number one, 32, 28, and four, uh, 32, 28, and six, four shutouts, save percentage of 0.922, and he's still got a two overall boost, so I don't know how goaltenders work in franchise mode, but Carey Price, Charlie Lindgren, and, uh, who's the other guy, Zach Rucali are the same overall, but I'm just gonna run with Charlie Lindgren, he's already here, I don't feel like editing up lines. You know what, I'm not gonna put him on the power play, his, uh, his point totals might definitely be affected by this, but... I thought, yeah, no, I'm not going to put him on there. I'll leave Arturi Luckin, he's a sniper. I'll leave him on the power play. Uh, he might actually get penalty kill time. Let's see. Is he on the penalty kill? Okay, so fair enough. He doesn't get power play time. He'll get penalty kill time instead. Fair enough. I'm fine with that. Okay, with that being said, I think all our lineups are set to go. So once again, I'll take it to the halfway point here in franchise mode, and we'll see how good this Montreal Canadiens team is doing. So once again, my predictions have ultimately failed yet again so far the montreal canadians sit 17 20 and 4 at the halfway point 38 points on the air as you guys can see the wild card currently being held by the ottawa senators and philadelphia flyers at 46 points apiece so they're not terribly far back uh how many points is that eight points behind so four games technically they're back but they definitely need to pick it up a hell of a good bit i don't know what the deal is with the goaltending situation here patch already 34 points uh Jaren 33 zadina has 22 points in 41 games so he's on the right track um you know point wise he's definitely i think doing is he doing better than svechnikov he might be uh weber has 18 points the defense is kind of like definitely lackluster a bit in the terms of getting points and then Here's the goaltending stats. Yeah, Price 12, 15, and 2. Save percentage of point, uh, 0.919. Goals against average 2.54. Yeah, that's not carry Price stats at all. Uh, Lindgren's 5, 5, and 2 with a shutout 0.913. Save percentage 2.7 goals against. Yeah, so team's letting up goals. All right, so let's continue to sim here, guys. And, uh, you know, maybe they could turn it around a good bit. Hopefully those poi stats, which I have definitely said before might be able to uh have a tremendous effect here after the trade deadline because they do have a lot of games as you guys can see but let's see if uh maybe there's playoffs here maybe they can turn it around we'll see well i don't know how much faith uh, you have fans have in your team for next year but if it's anything like the way this simulation went yeah it was not good so as you guys can see the montreal canadians finished off the year 36 42 and 4 for 76 points Nowhere near a wild card spot. 91 points was the lowest amount total for a wild card position. The Atlantic was very, very competitive, as you guys could see. Fifth worst team in the NHL were the Montreal Canadiens this year. Wow, that's that's pretty pretty embarrassing to say the least. I mean, Pacioretty did the did the most damn thing. I mean, look at his point totals: 75 points for Pacioretty, 30 goal scorer, which is incredible. Same thing with Drouin. They had two 30 goal goal, goal scorers. Drouin had uh, 69 points. Nice. Uh, Galchenyuk 55. Zadina had 50 points on the year, and look at that. Oh my god, he's up to an 83 overall as well. So he had a very, very good year for sure. A plus 16 as well on the penalty kill. 13 goals, 30, uh, 37 assists, 50 points. So overall, he was the best player that performed out of all of the players, if I remember correctly. I don't think Svechnikov got around 50 points. I think he was in the 40 range if i'm wrong sue me whatever but that's definitely the best like performance so far and the biggest overall jump that we've had to up to an 83 overall that's really really nice defenders weber with 36 petrie 14 schlemko 11 ben 8 Juleson 5 and alsner with three and then the goaltenders carry freaking price you better not have a back-to-back -back year like this or Habs fans are going to be calling you to get out of that city as quick as possible and take your massive contract with you. 2.64 goals against, goals against average, 2.82 for Lindgren, safe same percentage percentage for both of them. 28, 32, and through. 2 is not good enough. 6 shutouts are nice, but when you only win 28 games during the regular season, that's not 
what you're looking for and a carry price and this team. So the good news is Zadina had an incredible year, a huge overall boost for them. And, you know, going forward with that team, I'm fairly confident that the Montreal Canadiens, as they're like bottom six in their defense, continues to get a little bit better. For sure, they'll be making the playoffs consistently in the game. However, past fans definitely don't want to see that happen again. I don't think it will. I think they'll be definitely competing for a wild card spot for sure. As tough as the Atlantic Division is, they still have the man Carey Price, and if he can stay healthy and ha goes back to being the Carey Price, they should definitely make the playoffs for sure. But through our three experiments with Buffalo, Carolina, and Montreal, all three failed to make the playoffs. The only team that made the playoffs was Buffalo in year number one, just the random regular sim that we had with the Buffalo Sabres. They made it to round number two of the playoffs. That was the only team out of the three that made the playoffs out of all six years of simulating so obviously these teams will definitely appreciate the top picks that they're going to get in this year's draft but as for playoffs i think they're still going to be on the outside looking in for next year as told by ea's simulation but thank you guys for watching if you did enjoy it once again make sure to leave a like comment subscribe as always if you guys have some more suggestions for things you'd like me to do in franchise mode, leave them down below. Other than that, thank you guys for watching this little mini-series once again. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.